cancer. I had cryosurgery for breast cancer in 2003 in Detroit, Michigan by Dr. Peter Littrup. He had never used it for this use before, although he was a pioneer for using it for prostate cancer and many other soft tissue cancer. And in 1999, or the late 90s, I believe it's 97, 99, right in there, the UN sent him uh, on a tour around the world, including China, to spread the word, the word about cryosurgery. So he's respected in the field. When I got cancer, I was, uh, I had multifocus cancer, and that meant multiple tumors, and my only option was a mastectomy. And so I did not want this, and my husband helped me find Dr. Lithra. At the time, he'd never done cryosurgery for breast cancer, but we, we said that uh, I was willing to try, and if it didn't work, I could always have the mastectomy. And he had operated uh, with cryosurgery on women's breasts before. He'd used it for fibrosis, so he knew how to operate on a breast, and he said, yes, I'll, I'll try it. The doctors at his hospital tried to talk me out of it and said it wasn't the standard of care, but they would do it for me if I was willing. And I was, and it worked out beautifully. And so then Dr. Lidrup, my husband, and I have written this book about my experience. It's called They're Mine and I'm Keeping Them. And we have a website. So over the last uh, 10 years, I've helped many other women follow Dr. Lidrup to find Dr. Lithrop in Detroit. But three years ago, his program was closed down, so I was looking for an alternative to tell women about that kept coming to my site. So that's when I uh, did research and find out about Fuda Hospital. And I told women, they said, no, too far away, too foreign, don't want to go. So I thought, okay, nobody's going to go unless I go check it out. And there was a woman from Canada that was thinking about it, and she called me, and I said, yes, I very much think you should go there. You need the immune effect. She had an aggressive reoccurrence of breast cancer. I thought maybe this was her only hope. So uh, in 2012, I came here, did an internet uh, fundraiser, and decided to come to FUDA with my son, who's a filmmaker, and see what we could find out. Um, so during that time, just as a coincidence, but a fortuitous one, Dr. Lidrup was also at a meeting like, like what we will be having tomorrow, a conference. So I got to be with him and he confirmed, yes, this is really good. Um, and the one thing I learned about at that trip that I had not known about before, it's really pretty unknown in the United States, we don't do anything like it is the immunotherapy, the combined um, immunotherapy for cancer. I was so impressed, and it made so much sense to me to add this to cancer treatment that uh, I, I saved up and brought my husband with me who had had prostate cancer, and we both got CIC done this last April. Um, during that time, I gave my book to Dr. Shu, and uh, he was so impressed with what I'd written about Fuda that he's offered to publish it in China here. So that will be coming out, I believe, in the future. But um, I'm back here to, uh, now, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shu's invitation, and uh, the patient I told you about is uh, also getting some more treatment, but she really has remained symptom-free. She was really four-stage, you have to say terminal, and now she is symptom-free with no um, cancer, just a little swelling in her lymph nodes that she's getting treated here. And this is just an incredible miracle. 
I am so impressed with Luda, and I would uh, like to encourage all of you. Um, I know you're reporters. I think the only way people are going to find out about this probably is that they're going to read it in the press, because right now we really are patient pioneers. You need people with cancer to try this, and as the volume grows, now it's 10,000, but when it's 100,000, everybody will want to do it. So you need patient pioneers, and the only way they find out about that is really through the press. So I encourage you to, to share the stories you find here. They're really miraculous. Thank you. Um, many cancers, but not for breast, because it hasn't gone through trials, which is how it would get the code. And there's a, a thinking that one size fits all, so every woman that has uh, a certain type of cancer, they get the same treatment. It's called a protocol. And without, uh, you know, they just get that protocol, all the uh, information. That's what the, can the doctors know. So when you introduce something new like this without the, the code number, nobody will do it because we're a very litigious society, if it doesn't go right for someone, there's a huge lawsuit, it will never see the light of day. So they have to be very careful. Even though a lot of the innovations and the, the equipment comes from America, we're not using it in America. And trust me, that is the most upsetting question to me when I tell people, this, this is great, we want it, the women want it so badly. You should hear the stories of the women I talk to all the time. And they say, uh, if it's made in America, if it, the machines come from America, if the, uh, so much innovation is done there, why don't we use it? And how do I answer that? Well, it's very complex. It's political. You have to have the code, and it, talk, it costs millions of dollars. So until the, like she said, until the companies get behind it and are willing to put up the millions of dollars to do the trials, the trials that go on now, they have proved that it works, but the women are required to get uh, a mastectomy two weeks later. They, they do it because they want the immune effect, which is very important to them, but they still have to give up their breasts. I was the first one, and I had to self-pay. So 